Hey, Monica, did you know it's now even easier to listen to Around the Hay Bale podcast? What? Really? How easy? That's right. All you have to do is say, Alexa, play Round the Hay Bale podcast. Playing Round the Hay Bale podcast on Apple Music. Ooh, we're really fancy now. Tune in to Round the Hay Bale every Monday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Grab a cup of joe and let's gather around that hay bale with your hosts, Anne from Andale Homestead, Casey from Ormsby Farms, Monica from Bland's Promised Land Ranch, and Sandy from Suburban Home Center, Wyoming, Arizona. Here they are. Hey, hey y'all, hey. hey. Y'all, hey, we're so glad that you're here around the Hay Bell podcast. I'm Ann with Andale Homestead. And good morning, Sandy. We're so glad to have you. <laughs> good morning. This is Sandy from Suburban Home Center, Wyoming, Arizona. And I'm Monica from Bland's Promised Land Ranch. Hello, everyone. It's Casey from Ormsby Farm, and we sure do love technology here at <laughs> Around the Hay Bell and the Mute Button. But we are so glad that you have joined us for yet another episode. This is our second half of our fifth season, y'all. You asked for it. We listened. Now we have 12 more episodes coming out of season five. And why not have this next guest in? She was with us. She put up with us for four four seasons she is the queen the queen of the pantry yeah we call her pretty princess pr pantry maybe i could talk today y'all <laughs> with a mute button let's go ahead and let's my dear friend alicia welcome to the back to the hay bale i gotta say i've been called much worse <laughs> and i'm so pleased to be back with you guys you guys put up with me more than i put up with any of you and i'm just gonna right now just own the fact that all these technical difficulties are because I'm here today. <laughs> <All that's easy. laughs> but I'm pleased to be back. Thank you for being here. Okay, so we're talking pantry. And this was kind of a unanimous topic that we decided to all talk about when we were rethinking the next 12 kind of topics because around the time that this episode is coming out because most of the listeners know we pre-record our episodes it is right after canning season so it's mid to late september and what are you doing? You're prepping for the winter. You're making sure that not only your canning supply is stocked up, but you have freeze dried stuff. You have rice, you have beans, you have vacuum sealed stuff. Mm -hmm. Everything that you need in your pantry yeah, is there ready to go. And I think Alicia has a story yeah, on why it's so important to have the pantry stocked that kind of saved her life because of that. It has. It has. You know, um, I've heard some uh, scuttlebutt that people are wondering why I left around the hay bale. And it's nothing nefarious, nothing scandalous, although I do live for scandal. But, you know, Papa Jim and I had reached a chapter in our life where for Christmas we bought a brand new car. We were going to plan all these wonderful trips and take one trip a month and just really kind of just roll into our golden years with new experiences. So Knowing that I was going to do that, I didn't put in a garden this year because I didn't want to have anybody tend to that. And I was glad that I had my pantry put together. But because we don't make plans in life, we're not in control of everything. My husband was aged out of his job. Now, he said he was going to go into ret early retirement. That was to save face so that he wouldn't lose some benefits that we had that we were trying to hang on to for a little while. But he was aged out of his job. He's working here at the farm now. So we've gone from a very comfortable income to really scrap and putting things together for those two pennies to rub together. And when this decision was made, I had this peace knowing that I had a fully stocked pantry and we can eat for, I'm not kidding, two, three, four, five years out of that pantry, worst case scenario now, because I put so much effort into it. And when I first started this in about 2019, 2020, uh, before things went crazy and the whole world was off of its axis, um, 
I was made fun of. I was made fun of by friends. I was made fun of by family. And, you know, ha, 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 prepper mom. Well, nobody's laughing now because I have an entire large bedroom stocked from floor to ceiling with everything I need to get me through. And I'm more than happy to share with you some of the things that I did without even having the forethought of what was going to be coming down in our lives. So I'm really grateful that I have what I have in the pantry. I sleep much better at night. That sounds wonderful. And um, we really appreciate your input because you've been wonderful at that. And Sandy. Well, um, I'm like Alicia. We literally took one of our bedrooms and first we had it upstairs. And then I decided that it was cooler in that part of the basement. So we moved all of our pantry downstairs and we just added lots of shelves. So no matter what happens, we are okay. And I'll honestly tell you, I haven't bought toilet paper since um, the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> because that is something I am never going to be without in my pantry. <laughs> well, and I think that's important to, to, to that you mentioned that because your pantry doesn't just necessarily mean what you put in your mouth. Huh? I right. mean, there's a lot of things that you need to have in case you can, one can't go out of the store out to a store, let's say storms or snow blizzards, or if you're aged out of your job, which, you right. know, is very common. It's sad, but it's very common for elder people um, in the jobs. Crazy. I'm not old. I'm 36, but I was aged out of my job that I had been with almost 20 years. Huh? I was <laughs> aged out. It is just a thing that ridiculous people are doing now at the jobs. So having a stocked pantry is where you need to, is where you can find your comfort, is guess the word, the verbiage that I'm looking. Um, and I have to say that Alicia, when we first started the podcast back uh, 400 years ago, um, she, she did a little live on Augustine Farm freeze-dried items and turning it into meals in a jar. And I must say that learning that from you, Alicia, has saved my life on quick, convenient foods. Uh, I know me and Sandy were talking about it before we started recording. And even Anne was talking that she does some of it. I, Monica, I can't remember if you do it. But we're talking about freeze-dried stuff in a jar that all you have to do is dump, add boiling water, however much it is, and then you have a meal. And the crazy thing is that one little pint jar that you do actually doubles and triples sometimes on a meal to where that could feed even the bland football team uh, um, of of people that are eating. Um, so Sandy, talk about what you do meal in a jar wise. Huh? Well, I don't have a freeze dryer and I mean, I can dehydrate things and put them in a jar, but I just do, I have jars that have everything in it that's dry, mm -hmm. you know, so it could be all kinds of soups. Um, it's all right, we're having a little technical difficulty this morning just for a second. But Monica, how do you do as far as your pantry preps and making sure that you have things that are ready? You know, none of us on the panel have a freeze dryer, but we have there's a lot of other ways to be able to prepare and to have Well, can we just say that we would love a freeze dryer if Harvest Wright wants to send the host panel one? Please yeah. send away. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. That'd be yes, perfect. Yes, I would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um no, you know, one of the things that I do, I I have done the meals in a jar. Um I've done a few of them. Um it's not something it's probably something I should probably like do more of. Um but my kids aren't all the the ways that they eat it's not necessarily the same. So we have one child that stays away from um, dairy products heavily. Um, Eric stays away from pasta and mm -hmm. grains and things like that. So there's certain things that our dietary needs are different in the house. Um, obviously when we're preparing, I'm not thinking for my pantry that it's um, end of the world. Okay. I don't, I don't apocalypse prepare. I right. prepare for situations like with Alicia, where she was saying where, you know, we needed this pantry because the grocery store isn't an option right now um, mm -hmm. because I don't have the money in the bank to go to the grocery store. So that's what I'm kind of preparing for here. Um, and knowing that I have it for my kids um, as well. And knowing that I have it for my adult children to be able to come and grab as needed. So one of the ways that I put things in my pantry actively is by canning leftovers, 
canning yes. meals. I'm making a larger meal. So it's not necessarily leftover, right? Um, you may make a one pound of meat for chili and then you have that chili and you eat it that day. And then the next night you finish it off. Well, for myself and my family, I'll make six pounds of ground beef, mm. make enough chili for everyone. Basically what people normally do is soup when they go overboard, when it's soup season and they make way too much soup. I right. do that with everything. I tend to make more than I need knowing that I can make three or four jars of that same thing, that item, put three or four jars in my pressure canner, my instant, you know, my electric pressure canner, um, can those meals up at the end of dinner. And by the time I go to bed, it's ready to rings off, clean off, and then put in my pantry before the next day even happens. So that's mm -hmm. one of the ways I do it. And it's really it comes in handy too, because it keeps Eric and some of my kids that work, it keeps them from eating garbage. Um, because I like to like, for instance, if I'm making spaghetti or if I'm making um, chili, I can make it into the pint jars. I can go ahead and jar them in the pint jars. Um, it's not necessarily family size, but it's enough for them to take to work, dump it into a bowl and eat right. good, healthy meals at work. And so mm -hmm. that's one of the ways I prepare my pantry is really just using the meals that I have and canning them as is. And I've canned up roast beef with mashed potatoes and carrots. Um, I've canned up, you know, chunks of carrots and potatoes and beef. I've canned up, you know, all kinds of different meats with vegetables in it and right. throw them in my pantry. And that's one of the ways that um, we really do kind of keep it prepared here. Well, there's two schools of thought and excuse me for interrupting in here. I, oh. I've had two scales where um, there's one side that has the meals that are ready to go, the whole meal in a jar which is fabulous. And there's others that are saying, look, we're going to have, I can make a fire out of candles or cotton balls and Vaseline to heat things up. So I can have a whole bunch of different items that I can make in many ways to suit the different appetites. Now, Alicia is the queen of her pantry, man. She is just ready to go and rocking and rolling. Sandy as well. But Alicia, what have you found more beneficial in your pantry as far as having meals ready to go or individual items that you can make into a meal that you want? You know, I think diversity is key. I think if you only allow yourself one school of thought, you're going to shortchange yourself. You have to have that diversity. So I have a very diversified pantry all the way from my home canned goods, from my garden, to actual canned goods from the store. I've done a video before where I used to, every pay period, take $10 and find one thing on sale. If ketchup was on sale for 99 cents, I'm buying 10 of them and I'm putting them in my pantry. And I did a video where on the ends of your racks, you can do those, those canvas shoe holders. They hold your condiments beautifully. I pack those with mustard and ketchup and barbecue sauce. If I have stuff to can it, great. But if I don't and I catch it on sale, that's where I store it. It doesn't take up that space there. So I've got that. I also really got into getting the five gallon buckets with the gamma lids and I have stuff packed away. I think I have 22 or 23 five gallon buckets in that pantry. Wow. And you know, it's one thing that I wanted to, to touch on that, that Casey mentioned is I have three buckets of picnic supplies because if we lose power here due to a bad storm or something bad happens on our grid, I don't have a well until we hook up the generator to it, which means I don't have water, which means I'm not going to be wanting to wash a lot of dishes. Mm -hmm. I have everything I need in those picnic supplies. Right now, one thing that's really helping us is I have two or three buckets of coffee beans and a hand grinder and a French press. And if you're going to store coffee, make sure you get the beans. They retain the oil. And then you grind them. Then you're able to make your coffee. We had to bust into that this last week. Coffee has gone through the roof. It has. So, you know, one thing too, Casey mentioned August and farms earlier. I'm very grateful that I stocked up, up on August farms. I use the August and farms in my meals in a jar. And then I also have plenty on the shelf for when I need them. Um, another thing that has really paid off that my family really made fun of is when I first started this venture into putting my pantry together, I went to Harmony House and I bought a bunch of their freeze dried TVP, their texturized vegetable protein meats. You can get real meat. You can get the vegetarian meat. 
And I bought, you know, 30 pounds of dehydrated this and 40 pounds of dehydrated that. And it comes in this box and you're like, gosh, that's not going to last very long. I've been using it for four years. Wow. And I still have totes of uh, vacuum sealed meat that I put away. I will never use up all of that meat. And with the price of meat right now, I'm right. very happy to take out a little bag of the ground beef that I make my chili with or manages or whatever. And I know I've got plenty more where that came from. And, you know, if I have a, a run into some extra money, that's one of the things I plan on replenishing is making sure I get that taken care of. I mean, I know Casey wants to say something, but I want to hit a couple more things in my pantry because I have all of those five gallon buckets and so many diversified things. I actually started a Google Doc spreadsheet. Everything is there. I know what bucket number has what in it. I know I can go right to it instead of writing everything on the bucket. If I'm at the store, I can pull that spreadsheet up on my phone and say, oh, look, I do need some canned peaches to go with that little fruit salad I want to put together tomorrow. So I know instead of going and buying two and getting home and going, gosh, I had 20 already here. That way I'm not wasting that money. Um, also, one more thing before I, I uh, get into this. I did a video on putting together seven day meal buckets and they're totes, they're square totes. I rummaged through my pantry and I found seven meals for breakfast, seven meals for lunch, seven meals for dinner and two, three, maybe four little desserts. It's all in a bucket. It has the list of what's needed for each thing. And recently I have had a cousin who was involved in the floods in Western Iowa. They've lost everything. There's a bucket ready to go to them when they're ready. They have all of their meals. I don't have to worry about going and buying them a gift card and wondering if they're going to be able to use it. I'm not able to help them physically. But when my sister takes out some stuff and she takes bedding or whatever, here's an entire week's worth of food for your family. You don't even have to think about it because everything's written down here for you. This packet goes with this, can goes with this packet. Everything is there. I did a video on that. I highly suggest checking that out. Wow. So like I said, everything is very diversified. With regards to canning, and we were talking about canning earlier, um, I did another video that I think is so important, and I, I've had a couple of people kind of poo-poo on it, but I really think it's it's smart. We all know that if your canner is not full, you can can water. Well, I don't just can water. I take a brand new, freshly washed, white washcloth, roll it up, fill the jar with water, and then I can it. Now I have sterilized water with a sterilized bandage, and if there is an accident here on the farm, I know right where it is, or if I'm injured, I can tell somebody right where it is in my pantry, they can grab that, open it up. They have a clean wound care packet right there. You don't have to try to find your bandages or anything like that. And that came from a real life experience where I had an injury when one of my children were smaller and I couldn't find a clean cloth. And I just wrapped up what had been cut off, literally cut off from their body. And who knows what kind of infection they could have gotten because I just grabbed the first thing I could find that I thought might be clean. So I'm really into that. So I'm going to stop sharing all these little things. I've got videos. We can talk more about some of the things that I've done. But those are my key things is the freeze-dried foods. One more thing about that August and Farms before I let it go because you guys know I can talk forever. I've had some people say, well, oh, my gosh, $19 for a can of onions. That's terrible. I can go buy a bunch of onions and dehydrate them myself. You can. But your whole house is going to stink. And it's going to take you hours and hours and hours and hours and a lot of electricity. And all of our electric bills have gone up. I'd rather spend the $19, have August and Farms do it for me, disseminate everything into my meals in a jar that I need, and then I can use the number 10 can to either store more food or make a rocket stove for when I need it. I mean, there's so many different ways to look at it. I get a lot out of that can, much more than if I were to go buy a few bags of onions. Yeah, there's a lot you can do with those things. As a matter of fact, you know, thinking about our time is valuable, right? Yes. So our time is valuable to us. When when you when Casey goes out and he takes care of those animals, by the time he gets inside, he has to pri prioritize the time that he's going to spend doing X, Y, and Z. Same thing for Miss Ann, Sandy, everybody. You always have to remember that your time is valuable. So yes, maybe you don't have the budget for buying large amounts of the ten you know number ten cans, but if you have a little bit, just snag those sale items when you can, because those will add up and will help you later. And the possibility that you can be, you know, prepared when you need it. It's just really, it's important. Casey, do you have something to add? I was about to say, um, besides everybody knows that I'm the 
condiment king. I love condiments. So I'm the same way. I always buy condiments and stock it up in the pantry. But one thing, I had a challenge for my hosts. And um, I am going to challenge them now sh- closer to this end of this episode. Because then they um, then they have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we won't have any more time to say no. So the challenge that I have for the ladies, and it's funny that Alicia, um, who I am challenging too, she's not out of it. She's in it too. Oh um, boy. That she said is, can you get, we're going to call it hay bale bucket. Can you get seven days worth of food and things that you need in a five gallon bucket? And I challenge you to do that on $20. That's all you have. Now, Monica's may be a little bit different because she does have a football team. Uh, but for everybody else, uh, Alicia, Ann, Sandy, myself, we're all pretty much two people that we're preparing for. Uh, so 20 would be a lot easier. Um, Monica, I'm still going to challenge you to do the $20 bucket. So, girl, you're not out of it. But can you get seven days worth of food stuff that you need in a five-gallon bucket? I'm talking freeze-dried rice, whatever it is, for $20. So when this episode comes out, look for a video because I am going to be hounding these women to take pictures of what they do. And can we do it? Can we get this bucket? Because I have watched Alicia's video on that seven-day um food Mine's bucket. already done. Uh, Alicia has to do another one. It's done. Um, it's done. And I, I'll just take I have it out of the that, box man. and put it in the bucket. <laughs> but I'd like to do one thing with August and Farm, um, number 10 cans, is listen, okay, if you don't open it, yes, you got 25 year shelf life out of freeze dried stuff. But when you open, and I think a lot of people don't understand that, when you open the Augustin Farm jars, uh, there is a shelf life after that. And it's usually, <laughs> if you keep it open and le- take out the oxidant absorbers, you got about one, maybe two years if you're lucky. So what I do is I'll open that number 10 can and separate it into pint jars. Put an oxygen absorber, vacuum seal. Now we got 10 year shelf life just from that. So when I get the cheese powder, because, you know, me and Monica love nacho cheese sauce. That's absolutely horrible for you, but it's so delicious. I open that cheese sauce and I put it into jelly jars with 100 cc's of an op- oxygen absorber. And I vacuum seal that right then. Then I have eight, nine half pints of cheese sauce, which is what makes my cheese sauce. Or with the biscuit powder. You know, they have Augustin Farm has the biscuit that's already pre made. You don't have to worry about nothing but adding water, okay? I prep out for six biscuits in jars, vacuum seal them. Then you have your 10 year shelf life. So I wanted to put that in that, yes, Augustin Farm is 25 year shelf life. But once you open it, you ain't got no more 25 years of that because mm-hmm. it's going to go bad. Mm-hmm. Okay, so on this $20 challenge to eat for seven days, is it anything? I mean, we have it all has to be purchased. I mean, new. Uh uh. No, we don't uh -uh. use what we already have. Yeah, you can use what you already have. He's just saying you you can't can't spend more than 20 bucks. No more than $20. Oh, okay. So we can dehydrate some of our vegetables that we've been working on harvesting. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) And then I, what I wanted to see is what what types of preserving, because, you know, we have an episode, a couple episodes back that if the listeners want to go, once you finish this episode, go back and it's called the preserving wars. And we dabbled a little into the different stuff of dehydrating and canning and um, none of us have a freeze dryer harvest, right? So we can't really say freeze dried. But what do you do after you dehydrate it? Do you put it in a vacuum seal bag with oxygen absorbers? Mm-hmm. H- how do you store it? So that's my challenge. What, what do you okay, think so about we- that, Alicia? You know, I, oh, I'm I, sorry, I, Sandy. It's, it's really funny, Sandy. Give me one moment here because I know we're on, we used to have an hour. Now we're doing half an hour stuff. And I, I did tell everybody for old time's sake, I'd want to do a round robin. And it fits in exactly what Casey is saying. I had this picked out before we even started it because to have, to have a really good functional pantry, you do have to have the diversity of how you're going to put things up, how you're going to store them on your shelves. And some of the listeners may say, well, that doesn't apply to me because I don't have this yet. I'm not to that stage yet. But it's something to just think about. So my round robin question to the entire panel today is, what is your number one pantry 
applicable appliance that you utilize for making sure that your pantry has what it needs. Who wants to go first? Um, I'll go first. Okay. Um, I love dehydrating and I probably do that more. I mean, I do can, of course, but I dehydrate a lot of vegetables and some of them I leave them in the pieces. Some of them I grind up so that they're a powder. Um, and so that I have used that. I have an Excalibur it is probably, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years old. And it is a fabulous piece of equipment. That's awesome. Awesome. Who's that? And Casey? Oh, well, I, I, I want to say one thing, but I don't want to take Ann and Monica's choice. I'm taking it. We all know what it is. I have to say, I, I got the, okay, I'm going to say it, the vacuum sealing jar vacuum. The, yes. The one, yeah. because yeah. it's so easy to put stuff in there and then when you take it out, then you can vacuum seal it back. Huh? It's yeah. kind of like, you know, because I'm calling Monica out on this one because she's the one that taught me this. During the holidays, you get the wonderful colored Oreos and cookies that are, you know, so wonderful and healthy for you. Because you know they got specialty stuff at the holidays. They do. And of course, I want them. And you open them and then you... you what do you you have to eat all of them you feel bad if you let them go stale and that's why i have the shape that i do but if you open your cookie your peppermint oreo cookie you can already prepackage into the jars vacuum seal them and they're good until next christmas and then i can have my eight oreos that i didn't vacuum seal and for those that don't know it's got a little usb port where you charge it you don't have to have it hooked up to electricity you unplug it you can mm -hmm. take it right in your pantry and just pop it on top of your jars and just seal everything. It works really, really good. They're very, very reasonably priced right yeah, now. Usually so less than 30 bucks. bucks. Yes. And you can charge add. it on a small generator on yeah. the little battery operated, like the ones that you can charge your phone on. Yeah. Grid station. down. You can easily charge this and have it ready. Um, but what about you, Anne? What what's your what's yours? What's your decision? Well, my can I open it up for you? <laughs> It's going to be my electric canner. I mean, you know, sorry, Monica, but you're last on the list. And so we've stolen all of your items. Water bath canner electric or electric pressure? There's two. It's an electric pressure canner. Yeah. However, you can sorry, Monica, water bath much. in there. You can also cook in there. You can stew, but it depends on the settings. And it's the electric pressure canner. And that's my number one go-to because I can use that one item for a lot of things. Monica, what do you think now that we've stolen all your ideas? All the ideas are gone. <laughs> I, what, what was the question again, Alicia? What was the, let me What hear. is your most applicable appliance for your pantry? And I didn't say that you couldn't repeat. You can, you, I want you to share what is your, what is your so, most go-to for your pantry? So it's probably, if it wasn't the canner, my second would be um, some sort of vacuum sealer because I have a couple different vacuum sealers because if I'm not canning my items for the pantry, I'm vacuum sealing it um, and you putting it into five gallon buckets or throwing it right on the shelves. But I will say the vacuum sealer is a huge, huge thing for me. As a matter of fact, it's so important in my household that both of my daughter-in-laws my one that's coming soon and the one that i already have both of them have vacuum sealers they don't have the pressure canners yet but they have vacuum sealers because it is so important because you can vacuum seal your pasta you can vacuum seal your rice um yeah. i have two big gallon jars i took a 20 pound bag of rice recently didn't freeze it first because i don't i don't have time for that and i don't have freezer space for it and so i stuck them in these really beautiful gallon jars but they're the the seal the opening is too big to vacuum seal so I like threw, I, I threw a bunch and I put the lid on, but I didn't put a, what's it called? A little oxygen. Absorber. Absorber. I didn't put my oxygen absorbers in there right away. Cause I was like, Oh, I'll get them later. I'll get them later is the famous last words around the house because I just put into a pot last night, two gallons of rice filled with weevils. 
Oh no. Oh no. For a big bucket and I cooked it up for my animals because and of course the kids were like, look at all this rice right here. And I'm like, yeah, it's all bad. Um, mm. I did train FYI, if you ever need you weevils out of rice, they come to the surface when you rinse your rice. So just have to just in case you need to use it. Um, and my kids probably would have never known if I put a bunch of pepper in it, but <laughs> the point is is that I didn't. <laughs> No way. That sounds like a fun family game just night. Saying, I'm just it a saying, weevil hey, is a I, I don't know. I had to read the pepper. pepper. Just saying. <laughs> I'm not saying I did it. I'm just saying you could if you needed to. Um, extra protein. But I will say the vacuum seal, I regret not using my oxygen absorbers and the vacuum sealer and putting it in smaller, you know, half gallon jars or whatever, because um, I just wasted an entire 20 pound bag of rice. I was so upset. Um, and so, I mean, the pigs will eat it. The ducks and chickens will eat the cooked rice. It'll be fine. Everybody will survive. Um, but it wasn't something I want to do. So yeah, for sure, 100%, some sort of vacuum sealing, whether it's the countertop canner one or whether it's the big vacuum sealer, that is my go-to for sure. Um, because dehydrated foods are great. You know, that's one of the reasons why we, we do the August and farms and we do all that. But yeah, I would say dehydrated stuff and vacuum sealing it. Very good. So. I'll, I'll say real quick before we close out, I think what, what is most important in my pantry is, again, some form of vacuum sealing because you get all this food, you do want to put it away properly. But my most favorite appliance that is really just a luxury is, again, the Nesco pressure canner that is electric. I make a big batch of chili. I do the extra chili. It's in the pantry when I need it. I use that machine at least twice a week to make my fiesta beans. And I did you know, awesome. for all of our listeners, Alicia is one of the people that peer pressured me into getting one. And we have officially peer pressured Sandy into getting one. So she is now the proud owner of a brand new baby Nesco electric pressure canner. Yay. And we're all very happy. And before I pitch it to Sandy to close out, because we've had so much fun talking about pantry, y'all. If you're wondering, August and Farm, where can I get August and Farm? What you can do is you can click on that round the hay bale link tree and hey, y'all, we're affiliates with them. Head over, use our hay bale code. It costs you no more money to use it. It just shows them you came from us. And we do have a hay bale 10, um, which you get 10% off of your very first order. So if you have ordered with August and Farm again, it won't work. I'm sorry. Womp, womp, womp. But we are affiliates with them. We hope you head over there, check them out, stock up your pantry. But Sandy, did you want to close us out today? Sure, I will. Um, first of all, Alicia, thank you very much for coming in and um, talking with us. And um, she has been just a big part of Round the Hay Bell for the four seasons that she was on. And we just really appreciate it that she decided to stop in. Um, now, remember that um, Round the Hay Bell comes out every Monday morning so that you can listen to us. And then the following Friday, we will um, be live on a radio um, program so that you can actually ask questions about the Monday program, which is just fabulous. And we all have um, our Linktree links and we have Amazon stores and we just appreciate that you guys go in and um, purchase those things through that. And just, we hope you have a great week. And Alicia, again, thank you so much. Are you enjoying the Hay Bell Topics? To learn more, click on the Linktree link to get all of our product recommendations along with discount codes and more.